So now in the third section of our lecture, we will talk about classification of chronic otitis media. In the last section, we already talked about what is chronic otitis media, what uh, what's the pathology, how it can present, and um, what's the uh, different microorganisms that can cause uh, chronic otitis media. So uh, classification of chronic otitis media. In this section, we will talk about the clinical features, investigations and treatment of uh, chronic otitis media. So as far as the classification of chronic otitis media is um, it, it depends, we have muco it's a mucosal disease with no evidence of uh, invasion of squamous epithelium. So in uh, chronic otitis media is mainly there is involvement of mucosa. So it's a mucosal disease and there is no evidence of invasion of squamous epithelium. The chronic otitis media, if we see here, it's a mucosal disease or um, squamosal disease. If in the mucosal disease there, it can be active, inactive, and healed. Three types of mucosal involvement, active, inactive, and healed. Active is uh, chronic suppurative otitis media. In inactive, there is per permanent perforation and in healed, there is adhesive otitis media. So when it's uh, active, when we classify the chronic otitis media as active, it means there is suppurative involvement and there is discharge from the ear. This chronic otitis media, then once the perforation occurs, then we label it as inactive. And then after the perforation, slowly once the healing start and there is formation of adhesions, we label it as heal or adhesive otitis media. So three types, active, inactive and healed. Then in the second squamosal disease, there is Retraction pockets, which are in pars tensa or flaccida, are also called atelectatic ear. And then it's active, which is cholestitoma with discharge. So retraction pocket, and then it's also active, where is cholestitoma with discharge. So mucosal disease is active inactive heal in squamosal disease of chronic otitis media there is a retraction pocket formation and then there is cholestitoma with discharge so these are the two main classification of chronic otitis media then clinical features there is ear discharge Usually this discharge is non-offensive, mucoid or mucopurulent, constant or intermittent. So we have non-offensive, mucoid, it can be mucoid or mucopurulent, both types. Constant occurs constantly or intermittently. There is hearing loss, which is conductive type due to round window shielding effect. Because of round window shielding effect, there is conductive type of deafness or hearing loss. Perforation, which may lie anterior, posterior, or inferior to the handle of malleus. 
Then we have middle ear mucosa, which is pale pink and moist or sometimes red. So all these are the clinical features as there is discharge, hearing loss, perforation, and there is a change in the coloration of the middle ear mucosa. If you see, these are the different perforations. We can see this is the central perforation on the anterior. This is the anterior central perforation. This is the central perforation, which is medium sized. This is the subtotal perforation. You can see subtotal. This is the total perforation, complete. This is attic on top, attic perforation, and this is postro superior marginal perforation. So anterior portion, postro superior marginal, this is central perforation, this is subtotal perforation. So all these things can occur as a result of chronic otitis media and these are the different perforations these are the different parts of the tympanic membrane in which the perforations can occur then investigations. Investigations uh, usually uh, autoscopy and different to find out if there is, it gives you the useful information regarding presence of granulations in growth of squamous epithelium from the edges of perforation, status of ossicular chain, tympanosclerosis and adhesion. So a direct examination of the ear gives us the idea of all the these informations including granulation tissue form presence, if there is tympanosclerosis, if there are adhesions, it gives us information about the status of the ossicular chain or the ear, ossicles present in the middle ear. Investigations, examination under microscope, audiogram, culture and sensitivity of the ear discharge. That's important to find out what's the causative organism so we can actually start the treatment which is, uh, uh, which affects the causative organism. And then we have another x-ray of uh, mastoid and CT scan of the temporal bone. All these investigations are done to find out the uh, underlying cause and condition and how bad is the chronic otitis media. Treatment is to control infection and eliminate ear discharge and at the lat latter stage to correct the hearing loss by surgical means. Oral toilet or to clean the ear by uh, fluid. Removal of all discharge and debris from the ear. Ear drops which are usually antibiotic ear drops containing neomycin polymyxine, chloromycetine or gentamicin combined with steroids which have local anti-inflammatory effect. Then there are systemic antibiotics which are useful in acute exacerbation of chronically infected ear. So all these are the different treatment options for chronic otitis media. Then precautions are keep water out of ear during bathing, swimming and hair wash. So it's very important that we should keep the infected ear or the ear with discharge as dry as possible. Treatment of contributory causes, there is uh, treat concomitantly infected tonsils, adenoids, maxillary, entra and nasal allergies. Surgical treatment is oral polyp or granulations if present they should be removed surgically. Reconstructive surgery uh, including myringoplasty with or without ossicular re uh, reconstruction 
can be done to restore the hearing. So all these are the different uh, treatment options, which in front uh, ear cleaning or oral toilet, uh, ear drops, uh, systemic antibiotics. If uh, not, then we need surgery to remove granulations, to remove polyps, and reconstructive surgery for uh, tympanic membrane and ossicles. ossicles. So lot of treatment options are available depending on what's the requirement and depending on the individual case. That was all about the treatment and classification of the chronic otitis media. Thank you for watching scardia.com.